Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I think it is time to have a look at the latest .NET 8 features. Maybe you remember Blazor United is the great stuff we get with .NET 8. Now not called Blazor United anymore. It's just Blazor and I think this makes a lot of sense. Anyways, with the previews 4 and 5, we get features regarding Blazor, meaning streaming rendering and we can set the render mode to server. I want to show you what these two already actually mean and with that I hope you understand a bit better what you can do with the latest Blazor with .NET 8. And if you do, meaning you learned something and you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you so, so much for that. And maybe you want to check out my newsletter for more .NET and Blazor stuff right into your inbox. And now let's have a look at the latest features of .NET 8. Now, what do we actually have here? Now, first, I've got the preview edition of Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition 17.7.0 it is. So with that, I can use the .NET 8 framework and I've got the preview 5 downloaded and installed. And now the great thing with preview 5 now is we've get or we've got a brand new template and this is the Blazor web app. So no Blazor web assembly or Blazor server, only the Blazor web app. Now have let's let's have a look here. Blazor web app. That's the one the project template for creating a Blazor app hosted inside an ASP.NET app that runs on the server. Now this template can be used for web apps with rich dynamic user interfaces UI. So let's just use that thing. Let's say blazor app.net 8 preview 5. This is a great name. And when we create this, it will already create a blazor well, a server application that will use, as you can see in a sec, if my, uh, my machine wants to, the new attribute stream rendering true. Now, what does this mean? Well, I would just say we run this application and have a look because down there, you also see that to simulate retrieving the data asynchronously, the .NET team added a await task delay of one second in there. So what we actually want to see is that first we get the loading screen, let's say a loading text. And after that, then we after one second, approximately, we will then see the forecasts. Well, let's try that. We go to fetch data. And well, that was really, really quick. And actually, when I tested that, I am not really sure if you will ever see the loading screen, but that's actually not that important. The important part is when we refresh this, you already see that here it accesses the, the page show data, right? This is our route. This is the page. And now the result is that thing. And this is not the whole data here, right? So indeed there was something happening when I changed the throttling, at least on my machine. Sometimes it did work, sometimes it didn't. So you not always see the loading screen. Let's call it that way. But again, this is just a preview and it could also be that just my machine doesn't want to show you the loading text. But anyways, yeah, that's the result, right? Anyways, important stuff again, show data and the data we get first is loading. And then when the result is there after one second, we dynamically get this result here on the screen. Now the big difference is when we simply remove that for instance and try that one more time, then see again, there's our result. We see that this is actually what gets downloaded from this or this is, this is the result we see and really gets downloaded from the, from the server because maybe you might ask, and this is this was also my question, well, streamed rendering, okay, this is a, a nice term and I see the result, but actually when I have a look at Blazor server at the current state of .NET 7, I see the exact same stuff, right? So let me, let me just open this real quick. There we are, .NET 7 is the target framework and here in the pages now fetch data, right? We see the loading text and down here now we are accessing a service and in this service, then we 
get the data you probably already know that and when we run this there we are and then we go to fetch data again we see no loading screen this is simply too fast so let me just reload the page and i've already seen it fetch data and here now we also get the data directly so this is a big big difference now if you want to see the loading text what we can do is in essence say awaits and then task delay also or let's just say two seconds maybe we await this as well all right so now let's restart the application it's trying to reconnect and now you see here this is the the loading part right we can only uh, set this to one second as well and try to restart the application Great, so in essence, the same result, you would assume, right? And when we go to fetch data, well, we directly see the data, although we actually have the loading stuff in there. So what is actually going on here, you might ask? And the big difference is, well, the term WebSockets. When you have a look here, we reload the page. Now this is .NET 7 Blazor server, we've got in this line here, this is a web socket connection. You also see the type when we can make this a bit bigger. Here you see web socket. We also got other web socket connections here, but the important one is this thing here, underscore blazer, question mark, and some other stuff. Sometimes, well, most of the times, it is kind of hard to read what is actually going on here, and some messages are sent, right? And you send something to the server, the server sends something back, and this is then what we see here on the screen. So there is a tunnel, let's say, where data is exchanged all the time. For instance, when we go to the counter page and then delete everything here, and then we go click me, click me, click me, something is going on here. And then, well, we get some results that uh, you might be able to read or not. Sometimes you see this patch event. Yeah, here's the click event. Right, so this is the first message actually. Again, we can click go here. And yeah, dispatch event async with the event name click and so on. You even see uh, where you clicked. So then the server knows, well, what's actually going on and what the user wants to do and so on. So stuff you actually don't need to know, maybe. Of course, it's great to know this, but Again, the crucial difference here is that we've got a WebSocket connection and in this Blazor server application, we already get a WebSocket connection as soon as we open the page. As you can see here, there it is already. Now in the .NET 8 version with streamed rendering, do you see this Blazor question mark entry here somewhere? No, you don't. And this is the crucial difference here. Real quick, a short reminder, the .NET Web Academy is opening again very, very soon. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description below. We will cover everything regarding building web applications with the .NET Web API, Entity Framework, Blazor WebAssembly, Azure, Git, what not please check out the link in the video description if you're interested there you can already sign up for the waiting list again opening very soon i'm looking forward to see you there so when we again go back to our blazor 8 application and uh, enable stream rendering you will see this is the previous result right but now when we restart the application and it is loading again, we see, and the user should actually also see first a loading screen, and then the data is, let's say, pushed to the, to the client, and then you see the data when it is here. So this is the big idea. Again, it is still a preview, so this might not still work, but we're getting there, or Microsoft is getting there, and this is really awesome. The .NET team is getting there. I love that really. And I am really looking forward to the WebAssembly features as well. But this is not everything I wanted to show you. You can now also make this thing a Blazor server. Well, not application, but you can use the Blazor server functionality, meaning WebSockets for 
a single page here as well because now when we go to the home page for instance you also see let me just reload this you also see that we get this result here but again there is not the websocket connection yet but in this beautiful post here from daniel roth let me have a quick look there it is enable interactivity for individual components even with blazor server and here now he explains how you can well enable the blazor server functionality and interactivity um, for a single page and this is what we have to do and in this little tutorial or demonstration let me just copy and paste that stuff so here we just create another page at Razor component. We call this now our typical counter page. And that's that. And now we add also a menu entry, of course. So here in the nav menu, there we can add this thing. And the last one, no, not the last one, almost the last one is we add server components, right? So in here in the program CS, we see the add razor components. And also here we now wanna add server components, right? And then we add the attribute render mode server. And you also see if you wanna use the CLI, you can do this by default. So with this new Blazor web app template, you could also add dash dash use server, and then you would have this out of the box, but in our case, let's just say we copy and paste that stuff. And here now we add attribute render mode because the thing is, when we do not use this and restart the application and go back here, and now we see the counter, right? We can go here, but there's nothing happening, right? So we have to enable interactivity. We have no WebSocket connection here. So let's just clear this, enable that, restart the application. And now it's reloading and we already see, here it is. And now this should behave the same way as the .NET 7 Blazor server application. So we go click me and now we see the results. And as you can see here now, we also see the event with the coordinates of the screen and maybe also a result like here's one and here now two, three and so on. So this is what you can do. But again, it's only for that page. When we then go back to fetch data, completely new world here, right? So we really just see uh, the loading page or the loading text first and then the data is streamed for us and we see no WebSocket connection here. So this is what I wanted to show you. If you wanna dive a bit deeper, please do that on the .NET blog, simply Google .NET blog or go to devblogsmicrosoft.com forward slash .NET and then you see this post here and uh, you can go to the Blazor section to see the latest changes. All right, that's it. I hope you learned something here in this little demonstration. If you want to know more, you have more questions, please tell me that in the comments. And as always, guys, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I love you forever. See you in the next one. Take care.